Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I would do a uni roundup of my first year of what it's like to be at King's College London. I thought I would share the highlights and the lowlights of studying in London and on my course which is economics and management. Results week was last week and it was all pretty good. Um, I got first which is great to know that all the hard work paid off. If you saw any of my videos around that time, um, my revision videos, my study vlogs, you will just see the stress emulating from my my body um, so it's nice to know that I have now a good stepping stone for year two and year three um, but yeah I have a very long list of all the things that I thought I'd mention just so I don't go off topic. The first topic is finances. So it is by far the most expensive uni I'm pretty sure out of all of my friends. Compared to my friends who are on average spending about 50-60 pounds a week on accommodation I'm over here spending around 200 pounds um, and that is the cheapest like the lowest of the low including food and with no transport costs just in walking distance to uni um, that was with my intercollegiate hall which was college hall I've done loads of vlogs there so if you haven't seen my uni vlogs I'll link them down below but I would definitely recommend staying in an intercollegiate hall because not only do you get to meet other people from other universities but they're in really good central location it's definitely the travel costs that rack up to about 20 quid a week um, and having catered accommodation too meant I had zero food costs they provide you with breakfast and dinner but then I would take seconds from dinner and use them for lunch. You'll find out I'm quite um, a prudent person. I, I'm not cheap but I just like things at a good value and I don't like to waste my money. Who does? Um, the biggest expense that I had was in Freshers Week where I spent £120 on my gym membership for six months. I didn't get a whole year one because I knew I wouldn't be there in summer and it would be a waste for me to buy those extra months. Um, I also had a gym buddy which was probably one of the best things ever. My friend Sarah she's one of my Frenchy friends and it made sure that we both got up at 7am before brunch or before breakfast and we would go to the gym before uni which was really good it's also a really nice way to make some friends you'd like do it together as well as that my other biggest expense was the freshers week ticket so I remember doing all of the calculations for which club nights that I wanted to go to you could get a wristband for about 200 pounds or something like that and to be fair it's not a bad deal if you're going to go to all seven of them. I knew myself that I wouldn't. I went to five out of the seven nights, which was, it just killed me off. I bought them individually, and I think in total I spent about £70 or something, like £60-£70. I don't drink as well, so there's no point me getting a wristband with all the drinks and like skipping entry fee and stuff. I myself am not a huge clubbing fan. I maybe go clubbing once every two weeks, um, and... It's always a bit of a chore to get me there, but when I'm there, I can stay until 3 a.m., 5 a.m., until it closes. I like to be the last one standing if there's good music, um, but I don't go often. However, it was necessary that I did this in Freshers' Week because I met so many more people, and then when you attract those people in the club and you become friends, then you can go do other things that you like that I go and have a meal with them or I grab a coffee with them now I don't go out clubbing with them as necessarily but I was just in that situation in the first couple of weeks just to meet them it is really important that you put yourself out there and go outside of your comfort zone and um, try new things um, within reason also very few of my friends had jobs within first year the majority of the friends that did have them were either working in bar jobs or there are a lot of nanny jobs as well in London so I signed up to be um, a nanny on Koru Kids I think that's what it is I'll leave a link in the description box below it's basically like a fancy nanny website another job that I would recommend is being a student ambassador for Kings because they pay really well I think it's like £10 an hour. Another thing under the finances is the books and stationary stuff that you need for when you go to uni. I ended up finding the majority of my books online or older versions which were a lot cheaper because they're not the latest edition. If I had bought all of the latest books it would have easily been over about £400-£500 pounds, and I don't have that amount of money to spend on books. Also there are a lot of second years that often sell them on Facebook group chats and stuff like that so always look out for them now onto the section about friends this is probably one of the biggest worries that everybody has when they go to uni but in London I had it especially just because of the stereotype of there being a lot of international students and I was really worried that it wouldn't fit in and I have to say that's not the case at all I think also I've been quite lucky um, with the people that I've met within the first couple of weeks and throughout the first year um, 
either by joining clubs like choir, I've met a completely different bunch of people that are on my course. It's a non-auditioning choir, everyone just goes and has fun, it's more chilled out. It's a different vibe of people there, which is really nice to have those two contrasting groups. The nightlife at King's is also really good. Every Wednesday you go to Guy's Bar, the Medic's Bar, the Medic's like to party. Um, so there's, it's actually a lot more sociable than I first imagined it would be. But another thing with me not drinking, like I mentioned in my uni Q&A video where I spoke about different assumptions and things like that and your questions, I'll link that down below. I did mention that I brought two non-alcoholic copper bags with me during freshers so that I was kind of prepared so that I didn't feel, you know, left out as it were. But it turns out that a lot of my friends, my Frenchy friends, um, my French friends, they don't drink for religious reasons so it's actually quite nice. I've got a good balance of people that do like to go out quite a lot and then I join them when I need to. Also being in London is great because old friends and family will always be coming up via London. Whether that's because it's really easy to visit you because you're in London and the trains are coming from everywhere, or it's because they're going up to their uni or coming back from their uni, they'll often come via London anyway, so they might as well pop in and see you and it's actually a really nice way just to say hi and catch up with old friends. Another great thing about being in London is that there is so much to do. My sister did tell me this because she was at King's for three years studying law um, and she was always like, oh yeah, you can always go to the theatre and stuff like this. And I was like, mm, I don't really like the theatre. I don't really care for that kind of thing. But then I went once because I got really cheap tickets and I realised how nice it is to dress up and completely forget about uni, go with your friends. Um, it's basically just like going to the cinema and there are so many good cinemas around London as well. So it's like there's there is actually a lot of fun things to do that I never thought I would enjoy and it's really nice, I feel very cultured now. <laughs> Plus Kings also did put on a lot of events during Freshers Week so I remember they had a big boat tour where I met quite a few of my friends and they had lots of yoga sessions. They did actually work really hard to um, integrate people from different departments and stuff so that's really good. On to homesickness. I definitely found that first term was easier than second term and that was also the same with my course. My course because in first term they were going over economic stuff that I'd done at A-level, by second term it was pretty much all irrelevant. We were going over ISO cost curves, ISO profit curves, stuff which I'd basically never done before and all my other modules were new as well, I'd never done accounting. So everything was very new in second term and I did visit home a lot more second term than first term, whether that was for work or just to see dim sum and my family friends I'm not really sure. The main solution that I had to the homesickness was all the photos that I had of my friends and family around my room. Not only are they a really good conversation starter during freshers because you can point out people and explain the weird photos but it made my room a lot more homely plus when your room is more homely and you've got your little tea caddy section with extra mugs and stuff your other roommates are more likely to come into your room and chill there and it creates a really nice vibe i'm sure you've seen from all my videos but with all the fairy lights and the glow in the dark stars and the wallpaper everywhere it was very different to everyone else's room so it was really nice to have your own space and i'd often just have people chilling in my room until very late at night just to chat and it was really nice to have that kind of company and and to make your room more welcoming to others as well. There are a few things I realised. Number one, that all-nighters make me really sick. The next day I will have flu and I just can't do them. Um, another thing I realised is that laundry isn't that hard and I can wash my clothes and dry them. Another thing I always thought about going to university was that I'd miss school and to be honest I actually didn't. I think that's because I took a gap year and in that year I matured quite a lot and um, I actually ended up wanting to go back to a learning environment by the end of my gap year and I was kind of excited to go to uni. For me having a gap year was definitely the right decision to make. Um, without it I don't feel like I would have been as emotionally resilient as I was by the time I started and I think it taught me a lot more about being alone by yourself and just traveling and being independent too. There is quite a big stigma around drugs and drinking at university but I truly believe that it's kind of the energy you put out will attract the kind of people back. I feel like that's kind of stuff happens everywhere so it's definitely not just in London universities, it is all around if not more at campus unis I'd say. One of the low points of uni I remember was in the second term when I got a little bit sick of being in catered halls. As amazing as it was and as lovely as the catering staff were it was just because I was eating this food like all I was eating was this catered food like 
school dinner food so I remember I was like I need to come home and have some home food just something that like I can cook myself as well I remember in the second term I got really into making smoothies I think I was making one every day and sending them to my friends being like look at this color one um, and I think that was a way that I kind of coped with having some kind of control over what I wanted to eat I think for me one of the hardest things actually about university was not not having friends it was actually more constantly being around people. I think when I went to university I, I knew I was a balance of introvert and extrovert but I thought I was more of an extrovert. I think as it turns out I'm more of an introvert so after about two weeks of freshers um, like non-stop being with people um, and only having like a couple of hours of sleep I was like uh, I think I need a day or two just in my bed alone um, just without anyone just to recuperate. It's not that I'm antisocial or I don't like spending time with people but just sometimes I think I'm I'm quite a busy person as well and I like to schedule everything so I don't have any free time um, so then some days I just crash and I thought I think that was probably one of the hardest times. The other bad thing about London is the stressful accommodation situation. Towards the end of exams I was just so stressed um, and some of my friends didn't have their exams so they'd already sorted out their accommodation so a lot of people all other universities will have done it before Christmas whereas for me I think I ended up doing it in June or something like that with my friend it was just so stressful everything is very expensive there are housing fairs they're not really useful you just get the order state agents number what I found is the most efficient way to get a place for second year or third year if you don't need one for first year is to do it via a second year student who is living in an accommodation that is going to move out and if they liked it then they can like pass it on and give you land landlord numbers and stuff like that. So I think that's everything from first year, from freshers week to exams, stress and finishing and finding accommodation. Um, I am looking forward to going to second year. King's is great, they do do doggy de-stress around exam period so what more can you ask for? And as usual if you have any more questions or queries or anything just let me know in the comment section below. I hope this video helped you and if it did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for weekly videos on this channel and I'll see you next week. Have a lovely day. Bye.